Hey, it's Sam on the Here's To Us, and welcome to part two of the winter storage video. In this video, I am going to cover what was actually done. All right, so we gave them the list, and we went away, and we kept in touch with them via email, and they were sending us questions and progress on it. Not everything got done, and that's okay. And it was a combination of uh, availability of parts and supplies and technician and scheduling on the part of the yard. However, we did get two other things done, and I'll tell you those near the end. So let's go through in the list and see what was done. All right, so let's take it from the top. The first thing was, hey, the props were okay. We didn't have any dings, nothing was bent, and they didn't need to be reconditioned, so that was good. The next thing was the rudder packing, and the yard had a little bit of an issue trying to get it. Um, they were able to find the access to the port rudder, but they scratched their head and couldn't find the access to the starboard one. So they emailed me and through our Facebook group for 504s and 500s, I almost got instant replies as to where it was. And it was really, all they had to do was peel back the carpet and there was an access panel there. So I pointed them to the right location for that. So let's talk about the rudder packing. Once they had access to that, it's a matter of getting the old rudder packing out and uh, you know, it had been in there for a while, and so they have to go in and meticulously pack those rudders now. Uh, I asked them to keep the old rudder packing so I could show you what it looked like. So I know exactly how to do it, how to take it out, put it in. No, but that's what I paid them for. And when we put the boat back in the water, they are going to check that first thing to make sure that, hey, it's holding and I'm not getting water inside the boat because remember water inside the boat is a bad thing and that's why exactly why we're having this done. Alright the next thing was the shaft seals those are inside the boat and they looked at them and we are good to go on that and I had given them a visual inspection myself so they blessed them and said yeah we're okay and again no water in the boat but you know having a trained mechanic look at things is great uh, when you're able to do that. So we got that done. The next thing was the line cutters. And uh, I talked to them about the integrity of the line cutters. And then I said, you know, every time I had pulled the boat out, they needed to be tightened. And sometimes, you know, they would be loose on there. And so I felt that, hey, maybe we needed to have them reconditioned. Then I talked to them and I said, you know what, let's just pull them because we're not going to need them in the Great Lakes. So I have them here, and so the next owner can take a look at them. They can be reconditioned if the boat does go back in an area where there's going to be a lot of crab pots or fish nets or whatever. Uh, they can consider putting those back on. So let's talk about the thrusters. The bow thruster, as we had suspected, had two missing blades. So once that was replaced, works just great. And so they gave me the part be able to look at and yeah, I'm thinking that maybe we'll mount this in the house somewhere right uh, Rev probably not and luckily the stern thruster was just fine they did a visual inspection of it and I really didn't have any issues with the stern thruster the bow thruster is a lot more powerful than the stern thruster um, and as you can imagine with the pivot point on the boat you get more authority out of that bow thruster so I use the bow thruster a lot more than the stern thruster stern thruster was good as well as the through holes on the boat and those are the seacocks and I had them exercise them inspect them and they said yep they don't see a need to replace those at all I had the generator seacock replaced a couple of years ago so I was fairly confident on that uh, the air conditioner seacocks we have two air conditioner pumps on the here's to us one runs two air conditioners that are up in this section of the boat and the other one runs the three air conditioners that are down below one for each of the cabins and then one for the salon and those through holes were good as well I had conversations with the uh, mechanics on the side through holes and for them to do it was going to require a lot of work and I was not really confident of 
how that was going to turn out. So not being there on site, I said, hey, let's just take that one off the list. Another item that didn't get done, uh, that I really wanted to get done, but they couldn't get it done because of availability, was the striping, and in particular, the boot striping. Um, another issue with the yard was they really didn't have the person who had done it in the past the capability to do it. So they felt like they couldn't do it and couldn't do it right. So we said, okay, nah, no worries. We'll order the striping and the next time we haul out, we'll try to get a uh, technician that can actually put the striping on. And that was not only for the boot striping, or for some other striping around the boat that I wanted done just from a cosmetic perspective. So something that we'll have to wait on. All right, so as we wrap up the outside of the boat and the bottom was the anodes were changed out into magnesium. That was done and that's a fairly easy thing to do. You just get the new ones, take them off and uh, take the old ones off, put the new ones on. So just a remove and replace. And uh, of course, those things don't, you don't want to paint the anodes, okay? So uh, those things uh, were put on, uh, I think in the sequence, they painted and then they put the anodes. They removed the anodes, they painted, then they put the anodes on. Um, the paint was done, nice job on the bottom paint, and we selected a Pettit Hydra Coat uh, that was environmentally friendly for the Great Lakes. All right, so let's move into the inside of the boat since we got everything on the outside of the boat. That was my main concern, boat out of the water, integrity of the bottom and all the associated things. Next is a safety item is the fire buoy. And the fire buoy system will detect a fire in the engine room compartment. It's designed to shut both engines down, the generator down, and all the blowers. We have to have a technician come out every year and assess that system, and that is important to me. So that was done, and we had it done as late as we could have it done in the season so that the we didn't want to have it done as the boat was pulled out because it would expire about six months after using the boat. So it got done. Um, probably about a month prior to the boat being launched. And it was done by a specialist, and um, uh, on this particular one, uh, I see 26 items that they checked, and nine were not applicable, so 17 items that they checked. And then they also pulled that tank, and they checked the pressure on it, and they also weigh the tank. So uh, signed by a, you know, a, a suppression, system inspector and it says system functional at time of inspection in other words hey you know it was good when we tested it if you have a fire you know hey uh, and it doesn't work we don't know what happened so let's them out of it so file that into the rum book and uh, also made the insurance company aware that hey you know we're keeping up on uh, maintenance items on the here's to us. All right, let's talk about the forward head. Uh, I had told them that, hey, the, occasionally we get water on the floor when we flush, and it was not urine or waste, it was water, it's fresh water, so I couldn't figure out what it was doing. And they came back with, oh, well, a list of things that they were gonna have to check, and they also said, hey, maybe it's better to replace the entire head, and at that point I said, you know what, I'll troubleshoot it myself when we get back to the boat. And so fast forward, got back to the boat, and uh, I got down there because I had replaced the uh, ball valve in it, um, oh, a few months before, and I had actually done a video on how to replace that ball valve. And I said to myself, you know what, maybe I didn't tighten the clamp well enough. And I thought about that over the winter time and got down there and I tightened that clamp up and guess what? No more leak. So um, one of those things where, hey, that could have been an, an expensive repair that didn't need to be done and all I needed to do was, you know, check a few things that I hadn't thought of before. Now, um, fast forward to, we also had an issue with that forward head that cropped up once we got back on the boat and what happened was we would flush the forward head and the, 
the pump would just keep going and going and going. So we were able to just manually turn that pump on when we needed to flush. And then once we were done, you know, the pump had pumped everything out, we would turn it off. But there was an issue. So we got to a marina and guess what? It is the pressure sensing switch was bad. Even though there was pressure in the system, this switch was not sensing the pressure and turning the pump off. So this baby here, which goes right into there, and there's a spring on here, there's a pressure switch, there's a wire that goes onto it, had that replaced, and that took care of the forward head problem. All right, let's talk about the refrigerator and the freezer for the first mate. My lovely first mate deserves a nice new refrigerator and freezer and we had sourced it out however parts availability and um, being able to get not so much the parts but the refrigerator that I wanted to get in there we couldn't get uh, we had looked at some alternates to put in there and those were also question mark and so when the yard kind of gave me all these questions uh, I said you know what I'm not on site the thing works let's just let it go we're just going to live with it and it has been working just fine but eventually that is something on our wish list to be able to get fixed now one thing that I left out about the outside was once everything was done on the bottom it was time to take care of those scratches and get some uh, fiberglass work done and that was finished and then we also had somebody come out and do the hole and so they compounded the hole and uh, waxed it and buffed it out making it look very nice you know running a big yard like that with many boats in it there's a lot of different priorities going on and sometimes the technicians move on to another yard and some are better at doing things than others and so there were three things that during our communication over the winter months uh, and into the spring we just decided to take off the list and one was the walker airceps they had never done one before on this particular engine and so they were kind of scratching their head with it and i said you know what we're not going to do that another thing was the solar estimate and uh, i guess in that particular area there's not a lot of people that do solar and much like you would find down in Florida where there's a lot of sun. So we said, you know what, um, we don't need to have that done. That was a kind of a nice to have. If we got everything else done, this is kind of icing on the cake. The other thing is nobody had a dinghy for sale. And so that's just fine. You know, we done uh, most of the loop not using a dinghy and uh, that was just fine with us. Uh, eventually, if we do keep the boat and uh, do the Great Lakes and want to do some more anchoring or exploring, we'll get a dinghy. That can always be done. We have the freedom lip on the boat. All right, promise to tell you, hey, there was something that we didn't have on the list, but it got on the list because of the mindful eye of one of the technicians as they were looking at the boat as it was pulled out. It goes back to Alexandria Bay when we were in the first winter storage event that I had talked about in the other video was when we started the engines after the boat was delivered to us, Rev was looking out and uh, she saw water come out but she also saw something come out and it looked like a beaver. But it didn't have a tail on it and so we weren't sure what it was but there was definitely something that had crawled into the exhaust area and when that water came out, hey, it shot out. So what happened was we found out that there was a muskrat that was gnawing on the inside of this. And you can actually see the teeth marks on it. So it's time to replace this. And I had to take all of these things off. And then I found out there's something called a muskrat grate. So we talked to the yard about that and they installed muskrat grates on both sides, the port side and the starboard side. Kind of a good news story, but it gave us a little bit of a startle, and one of the things that you will want to make sure that works on your boat, carbon monoxide detectors, and I found out that they also detect some other things. 
And once that boat went into the water and we were hooked up to shore power and uh, charging was happening, uh, we went to bed that night and I thought I smelled fumes and I thought, well, somebody started their generator out there. That's probably what it is. And then off goes the carbon monoxide detector that we have. And then I started to smell stronger fumes and they didn't smell like exhaust. So, hey, uh, trip down to the engine room and guess what? Our 8D starting battery was boiling and um, I had to disconnect that and we basically were switched over. We were on the house batteries and I don't know why it was boiling, but it was boiling. So we were very lucky that that woke us up and uh, you know the poisonous gases from from that uh, had was basically almost right under the bed as far as where the location of the start batteries are and that's why we were smelling it. So check those carbon monoxide detectors. We had to replace that 8D start battery and that was quite a mess for the technicians to come out, take it out of there, double bag it, uh, decontaminate the battery box and uh, install a new one. So we were happy that that had a good outcome. So in this video, which is a companion video to our first video on getting ready for winter storage, we reviewed, hey, the things that were on our list that we gave them, uh, the things that they could do, some of the things that they couldn't do, and remember it's always a balance between time, money, capability of the yard and the technicians that are there and scheduling priorities. So you need to stay on top of it and communicate with the yard as best as possible. We'll see you next time on What You Ought To Do.